I know for a fact there was illegal activity going on there. People have pictures of people carrying ballots out of that place. Um, there is pictures of vans full of ballots coming out of that place. It, they took, these Democrats took every avenue possible to commit fraud in this election. The, the, poll, book, the poll book is completely off. Completely off. Off by 30,000? I'd say that poll book is off by over 100,000. That how? poll book? Why don't you look at the registered voters on there? How many registered voters are on there? Did you, do you even know the answer to that? No, I guess it's, I'm trying to get to the bottom zero. of this here. Zero. Zero. There's zero. So my question then is if the... Guess how many... Wait. What about what about how what, what, what about the turnout rate? 120%? Why? We're not seeing the poll book off by 30,000 votes. That, that's not the what case. What did you guys do? Take it and uh, do something crazy to it? So how many ballots would you estimate in front of you that you observed were counted multiple times in the machine. Can you put a number to it, an estimated number? At least, at least 30,000. At least 30,000. This isn't counting, you know, the ballots that are found in rivers, the ballots found under rocks. I had called my manager over to a specific uh, tabulating machine. At that point, I was just really frustrated and upset. I, I could tell what was going on. I, I knew what was going on at that point. What was going on? Um, he was in on it. He was in on it. They were all in on it. In on what? They were cheating. It, it, it was very, very apparent. It was apparent he knew. It was apparent that he was in on it. And when he caught on to me being, in, knowing, me knowing that he was in on it, he just wanted nothing to do with me. I called the FBI yeah, okay. on the 8th, November 8th. I talked to two separate women. Um, over 40 minutes, the first one, gave her all my information. Um, the phone mysteriously cut out, and uh, she never called me back. I was waiting for her to call me back. She never called me back. Um, I had to call them back, and um, they never called me back. Never got a call back. Still haven't got a call back. And I had somebody else working on it that has a neighbor that's um, an old FBI agent, and still haven't heard back from that. Going back to the ruling from Judge Kenny, Timothy Kenny, he writes that your description of the events at the TCF Center does not square with any other affidav right. affidavits. Yeah. He says that there are, uh, excuse me, I'm, please, I'm speaking. Please, Thank uh, you. let's let the representative finish and then you can. He, he writes that there are no other reports of lost data or tabulating machines that jammed repeatedly every hour during the count. He also writes that neither Republican nor Democratic challengers nor city officials substantiate your version of these events. The allegations simply are not credible, is what Judge Kenny writes. So my question for you is, uh, you know, you're making claims here today that there's systematic fraud in, in what's going on in our elections. Are the courts also tied up in that fraud? Let me tell you what I did by accident, okay? I gave Channel 7 an interview that they tied in to that and made me the witness that's uncredible. Guess what, there's gonna be a couple behind me that are gonna say the same thing I just said. I was working for Dominion, yes. Okay. Something and very, very suspicious too, must I add, that we were not allowed to wear name tags at all. We were not allowed to talk about who we worked for. They were very secretive. They didn't want anybody knowing anything about them. Why is it that we're not having more people come forward? I mean, it seems like if there I'll was tell all you this why. widespread fraud that, you know, we'd have dozens and dozens of people. I'll tell you why. My life has been destroyed. My life has been completely destroyed because of this. I've lost family. I've lost friends. I've been threatened. I've been, th my kids have been threatened. My, I've, I've had to move. I've had to change my phone number. I've had to get rid of social media. I've there. The, nobody wants to come forward. They're getting threatened. Their their people. Their lives are getting ruined. I can't even get an actual job anymore. I can't <laughs> because Democrats like to ruin your lives. That's why. Thank All right. You. All right. Thank you.
I know what I saw, and I signed something saying that if I'm wrong, I can go to prison. Okay. Did you? Okay, we're. we're I think, I'm just trying I to ask you a, let a me, uh, legitimate question here. Yeah, let's let Representative Johnson ask his question, and then don't interrupt him. And then, okay. and then if you want to respond to it, that's fine. It, uh, did you have more representative? Yeah, I guess I just want to keep following back up with the poll book. So are we saying that the poll book is either wildly off or that they are, that they are filling in names? It's wildly off and dead people voted and uh, illegals voted. Okay. So that's my uh, answer. I think we're going to move on. Yeah. Do you have a point of order? I love how you can What's just your say point whatever of order? you want to say. <laughs> Why do you think this happened? After speaking to my attorneys and looking over the evidence they said they have, um, I actually think that they're not after me.
I haven't had access to any systems at DOH for over six months. I'm not a hacker. As the governor pointed out many months ago, I'm not that tech savvy and have no interest in reaching out to DOH. I've been publicly telling people to come forward for months. That is the way that you do it. And I, better than anybody, know that people at DOH aren't going to. If they didn't come out before, when I warned everybody that DeSantis would, and eventually he did get people killed, they're not gonna come out now. That IP address was apparently provided by the Department of Health, IG office, Inspector General, and didn't actually come from an investigation. It came straight from DOH. They didn't take the router in my house. They didn't take a number of laptops in the house that belonged to my son or my husband that could have easily done whatever it is that they think happened. They took my phone and they took the computer that I use to run my companies. And on my phone is every communication I've ever had with someone who works at the state who has come to me in confidence and told me things that could get them fired or in trouble like this. And I just wanna to say to all those people right now, if he doesn't know already, DeSantis will know soon enough that you've been talking to me, so be careful. DeSantis needs to worry less about what I'm writing about and more about the people who are sick and dying in his state. And doing this to me will not stop me from reporting the data, ever. They're protecting you, you fucking <laughs> They're protecting <laughs> your little <laughs> ass. You're lucky they're here and we're all by no Trump can impose martial law for the sole purpose of conducting a brand new election that will be overseen by the military.
вот Christmas stuff. working like a ass my ass I know that Christmas stuff that you know who gives a f about Christmas stuff and decoration but I need to do it right okay and then I do it and I say that I'm working on Christmas uh, planning for the Christmas and they said oh what about the children that they were separated give me a break have no problem with a $740 billion defense bill. Wave that baby through, but COVID checks? Let's rein it back. This actually is not a situation of every Republican not wanting a check. Uh, this is a situation, this is a matter of Mitch, McC Mitch McConnell not wanting a check. Even with many Republicans who are open to voting for a check, the problem is, is that they want something in exchange, right? And the thing that they want, that Republicans are asking for in exchange is something known as li corporate liability protections. What's that? Corporate immunity. And what do corporations want immunity for? A lot of corporations want complete immunity from their workers suing them for putting them in dangerous COVID conditions. You know, when a company tries to cram a bunch of people in physical space together, but doesn't provide masks or doesn't provide adequate um, protections that are in line with CDC guidelines. So what Mitch McConnell said is that we wanna give big corporations total immunity for five years from COVID related lawsuits. Now, if we do that, if we accept that for a one-time $1,200 check or a super short expansion of unemployment insurance, the deal is, is that you're gonna end up behind because you may get one $1,200 check on one hand, but you may also get a multi-million dollar hospital bill with no recourse and no ability to um, protect yourself from a negligent corporation or employer. And so that's not worth it, right? Your check is not worth your life. And so what we need to do is talk them down from that, right? I just think it's sad where it's like, why do you need to get something for helping your constituents? Why do you need to, why do we need to exchange people's well-being and ability to survive for yet another corporate bailout after we already, by the way, passed a $4 trillion leveraged fund for Wall Street in March. Frankly, like that's why Republicans, I think, have not been, have been, you know, not as, um, and why Mitch McConnell has not been in a rush because we because Wall Street got an enormous bailout 
I'm afraid that it kind of disincentivized them to come back to the negotiating table so that we could get more for working people. Whether that's true or not, I still think we have to see. Now, the current $900 package that is being negotiated has tiny unemployment expansion um, to the tune of about $300 and no stimulus check. Um, is that enough? Is that enough for you? Is that enough for your friends? Is that enough for your family? Is that enough for the people that you know who are struggling right now? $300 UI and no check, is that enough? I don't think so. I don't think that's enough. I'm actually like not this, um, I know Fox News and not even just Fox News, like plenty of other Democrats think I'm like this fire and brimstone, like my way or the highway, like blah, blah, blah kind of person. But the fact of the matter is I recognize that we need help and you all need help. And so the current state of play is that we've got this package. It's got some state and local funding, not enough. It's got unemployment assistance, not enough, but more, N not enough, but still something. In order for it, this to, I think, push through is with no funny business, no fine print, no taking stuff away in order to, to get people's relief is that you just add the stimulus checks in. And so I support this, but also what we're also seeing some movement in the Senate um, where uh, Republican Senator Josh Hawley is in support of it. And like, these are people that we never agree with, pretty much polar opposite on almost everything. Um, but both he and Bernie Sanders have introduced an amendment and we're speaking on the floor of, of the Senate um, to add stimulus checks. The bottleneck is Mitch McConnell. And what we're also seeing is Steven Mnuchin with this proposal of exchanging one UI for another. And I never see this kind of austerity when it comes to Wall Street bailouts. I never see this kind of austerity when it comes to things that the absolute wealthiest people in our society demand. We only see this austerity. We don't even see this austerity mindset for the military, by the way. We are voting right now and have voted this year in committees and on the floor in advancing a $740 billion defense bill. Seven hundred and Republicans have no problem with a $740 billion defense bill. Wave that baby through, but COVID checks, let's rein it back. Uh, unemployment, no. So this really isn't about fiscal responsibility at all. It's just not. It's about who's willing and who has the stomach to let people starve because they don't, I don't know, don't, aren't affected, have never been hungry. I have no idea. But the very fact that this is even partisan is sad. And we have to really make sure, you know, it, stimulus checks, it shouldn't be a Democratic thing and it shouldn't be a Republican thing. It should be a pandemic thing. It should be a national disaster thing. Um, it should be an emergency thing. <laughs> Truck hitter. Jesus Christ. Animal rights activist Regan Russell was killed while standing in front of the entrance to Fearman Slaughterhouse. Fulton police are conducting an investigation. Regan was there telling the truth about what really happens to these animals. And she was killed as a result. The industry here is very powerful and it will stop at nothing to make sure that people can't see the horrific conditions that animals are enduring. The government says it's trying to protect farmers and animals from trespassers. Bill 156 is a pro-agriculture act. It essentially stops protesters and extremists from giving water to the pigs like we see down here every couple days. Yeah. Who wants to put up with that harassment and get hassled? Look at this. These people here are illegally watering, touching, and stopping and interfering with the truck. They just want us out of the way. The police want us out of the way. The politicians want us out of the way. Movements have martyrs. That's the way it goes. 
This is a moment that is going to reverberate across the whole world and it has What's your name? Regan. Regan, beautiful activist trying to give water to the pigs. Animal Save Movement is an umbrella of groups around the world. And what we do is we go to slaughterhouses and we bear witness to animals. Oh my God. These animals are suffering. And one of the important things is, is to acknowledge that they exist. So what we do is we stop the trucks in the entrance and then we ask for two minutes to be able to give them water, compassion. And over the years, these truckers understand what we're doing. Two minutes! Regardless of if they agree with us or not, they know why we're there. They have cuts all over them, they're bleeding. I've seen ones with open infections. We've seen pigs passed out from heat, exhaustion. It's a living, breathing nightmare for the animals. And the one threat that's always there is that they're terrified. and then we move out of the way of the truck and the truck goes into the slaughterhouse. If you look online or if you look in the commercials, it's all these happy animals loving their lives, but that's not the reality. I didn't know that that's how they live. How would I know, really? Until somebody goes in and exposes it. It is shocking. Yes, it is. So where I come every Sunday yes. here. And Regan wanted the public to see this. She wanted to do all that she could. She was willing to put her own freedom at risk. People say we're breaking the law by storming. How do you think women got the right? How do you think slavery was abolished? People stood up and broke the laws. Because they're, they're stupid laws. This is my dad. We've known each other most of our life. We have been a couple for the last 19 years. I would attend protests with her or rallies. You know, she liked to know that I had her back. It was all about justice for Regan. She knew what was right. What are you feeling to the And she was basically saying, when anyone is suffering, you just do what's right. Is your breath trespassing? That's kind of her in a nutshell, because she said, if they arrest me, then I'm gonna get the story told. It's private property. How do we know what they're doing in there, except that we get video footage of it. They won't let us in, because they know that what they're doing is wrong. The Ontario government is looking to strengthen laws that shield farmers from animal rights activists. The government says it's trying to protect farmers and animals from trespassers. We're devastated about Bill 156. They're trying to criminalize whistleblowers. And these ag gag bills keep popping up all over the United States and Canada as the industry tries to silence its critics and tries to hide the truth. One of the only chances that the public has to see the conditions that animals are enduring is during transport. And the industry here will stop at nothing to shut down those videos. Uh, what we also know um, through doing research is that some truckers here in Ontario have taken a position that Bill 156 somehow entitles them uh, to act in a more aggressive fashion. There's been, I think, a lack of patience and some sense of entitlement when they're encountering these types of vigils. I thought I'd just do a quick little video here just to show some things. We are down here at Fearman's. Let me just turn that camera around. Look at them all. Two minutes. Here's the pig safe group. I refuse to block the road for them as it's not my job to witness for their safety. They should take their own safety into their own hands and have a court. So they find us as opponents to what they're doing. These trucks have run at us before and we've had lots of near misses where we've literally had to jump out of the way. I almost got run over. When the government passed this Bill 156, I suggested to Regan it might be more dangerous 
Maybe the younger generation will figure out something and we'll support them from the side. After Bill 156 passed, we didn't know how long it would be before the bill came into effect. So people organized an emergency vigil outside of Fearman's, which could have been one of the very last opportunities to legally see what was inside these transport trucks. And the evening before, we were having a chat about maybe not going at all. She texted me, she said, are you going tomorrow? And I said, yeah, I'm gonna go to the vigil. And she's like, she was so upset because of Bill 156. That day in Fearman's, we get there like 9, 9.30. We'd be there for like an hour or two. This is the pig slaughterhouse in Burlington, Fearman's Port. So it was basically a typical day, but it was very hot. Sorry, babies. This is the third truck we've seen, and we've been here for less than 10 minutes. Regan, there's a one here. Can you give her this one? Right here. See her? Can you get her? I'll, I'll get him. Let me give her some water. Yeah. Look at they came in the heat. It's like 100 degrees inside here. We are suffering. So our vigil was scheduled to end at 10:30, and at 10:20, I guess there was this truck that came. That was the last truck of the day, and we debated even doing it because we were going to leave. And we just said, "Oh yeah, we'll we'll do it." And you know when they're going to be aggressive because there's different things that they do. But he saw us and went, oh. So we went in the left-hand lane. He's like, if you want to bear witness, you guys come out in the street and do it. So this trucker just won't come in. So he's forcing us to bear witness in a very, very dangerous place. And he's trying to piss off the other cars. And we are bearing witness and it was extremely dangerous. There were cars right behind us. And then all of a sudden, he burst forward and accelerated. And he just went from the, from the wrong lane and just accelerated and went straight at her. <laughs> Truck hit her. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <sighs> no words. And I got to the other side and I saw her and she was lying underneath his front tire. I saw her body, it was cut in half. <laughs> Even though my brain said like, there's no way she's alive, her face was completely white. But I mean, I, I called 911 because I don't you know, I don't know. Comes the ambulance. My, um, my good friend said there's been an accident and in a split second, I knew it wasn't good. It was the most traumatizing thing I've ever seen in my life. And, and then we all gave police statements. The witnesses who were there that day made clear observations of the interaction between Regan and the truck. Each one of them was able to make those observations from a different vantage point. He definitely saw her. He knew exactly what he was doing. I'm not going to call him, uh, you know, that he intended to murder, but he certainly intended to run at her and scare her and look what happened. He knew that he hit her. He saw that he hit her. He dragged her. And then still didn't get out of the car. I don't know, like as a normal reaction as a human, you would get out and see, see how you could help, right? The number one priority for us is to ensure a thorough and comprehensive investigation and an objective outcome at the end. It's unclear exactly what level of resources were invested, and it appears that some valuable leads were not explored thoroughly or at all. They never asked me for, yeah, my number so they can follow up with me or anything like that. They just took my statement, and that was the last I heard from them. Superintendent Davis says the investigation is almost complete. There's no way he could have missed her 40, 50 feet away out in the middle of the road, just standing there. Right now you can see I have a clear line of sight down each side of the trailer because 
I can see that officer there. I can see the one across on that corner, standing there. I can see the corners in front of me, and I can see these people here. From my footage, like you can see the truck and where we are. And he was there more than five minutes watching her. And he finally decided to drive in and killed her. So, yeah. Police did not lay criminal charges against the truck driver. Instead, what they did is they laid a provincial offense charge, which is more like a traffic ticket. But we know that the police do have a videotape of what went down. And there have been many calls for them to release that video to the public. Activists took their protest to Halton Police Headquarters. Activists rallied a call for more serious charges to be laid in the death of fellow activist Regan Russell. Regan Russell was violently killed. She was dragged for 50 feet. How is that just careless driving? It's the position of Animal Safe Movement that it would be appropriate right now for the police to proactively release the video to ensure that there's full transparency about what happened that day. The death has dramatically heated the animosity between Ontario's livestock industry and animal activists. This incident really touched a nerve with some of these truckers. It's been very strange to see the counter protests where people are showing up, putting up offensive signs. They're saying things like Regan committed suicide. You killed your friend! Let me show you what's behind me. All the counter protesters are here. You know, when they're giving water to the pigs, you don't know what they're giving. It could be anything. 100%, we have no clue whether it's water, it could be acid, it could be anything. We've seen them do some pretty extreme things in the past and it's wondering how far they're actually willing to go. And you are definitely not allowed to harass truck drivers in their workplace, but that's what seems to be going on in front of this plant. This is unreal. This is what we deal with in a civilized uh, society. A lot of the truck drivers, they understand we're not there to hurt them, we're not there against them. We just want to give comfort to the pigs. But a lot of them, they just have such hatred for us. The system is evil, not necessarily the people in it. And the truckers are also trapped in the system and they may not realize it. And if someone threatens your livelihood, the first thing you're gonna do is shut them down before you want to understand and it's a really hard fight. This is really hard, especially, you know, if our friend gets murdered, it's right in front of our eyes. Movements have martyrs, and Regan Russell is a martyr. Right now we have hundreds of activists here. We're gonna go make sure that everyone gets to know about what happened to Regan Russell. It could have been any one of us. We are here in Tharavi, Mumbai, India. We dedicate this activity to Regan Russell. She's always in our hearts. I struggled a bit through summer emotionally, but seeing people in Berlin, Argentina, Italy, all over the place, it made me happier and gave me some hope to see that. And to see the world explode around Regan was beautiful, overwhelming at times. But there they were, discovering something that I've known for a long, long time. And we're going to continue fighting for her and for justice. Regan was a force of nature. She was steadfast in her passion for animals. Regan Russell literally gave her life trying to draw attention to one of the most pressing social issues of our time. We need to make sure that Regan's legacy lives on and then to fight the bill that she was so passionate against fighting. It's about confronting the reality of what you are really doing, getting real, getting real. Join us, that is what Regan would have wanted. And Tolstoy said, when you see suffering, you have a moral obligation not to turn away, but to get closer, see if you can help, and even if you can't help, to bear witness.
Can I interrupt you for just a moment? My 12 year old son is home by himself right now and there are protesters banging outside the door. Okay, I'm gonna go home and make sure he's okay. So I will reconnect with him when I get there. Madam Chair, Dr. Peterman, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I got a, a call a call from the, the mayor, and it sounds like the, the police, uh, and she is requesting that we stop the meeting at this time because of the intense level of protesters in the parking lot and a concern for uh, police safety and staff safety, as well as the protesters that are at some of our board members' homes right now. people saying that if you don't wear a mask, you're going to die. That is not science. That has never been proven. It is not true. Welcome to the people. This is the first time ever out at a rally of any kind. Donald Trump isn't here, but this is the next best thing. Just an update, I just went out and talked with BBT BPD. There's been one person detained, but they indicated that they have the situation under control. It is not under control at my house, and it's not under control at Diana's house. is the big fear and I'm not gonna come around and make sure you're standing six feet apart from your friend it's the only time COVID spreads <laughs> because the fact is it's we smart. will not comply we will not comply we will not comply protect you. It's muzzling. They want you to shut up and do what you're told. This may be the most important speech I've ever made. You know how sad you look, you fucking stupid fucking child. You up here with a chart that you can't even read. He can't even read this chart. He don't know what the f that chart say. He don't know what the f that chart say. I can't believe anybody that's a fan of me can't look at this stupid motherfucker and not be fucking embarrassed. I'm so fucking embarrassed. God damn it. Can we cut off access to the other countries of seeing this type of shit? You know what, motherfucker? You gonna go down in history worse than Nixon, motherfucker. You are a piece of shit. Not you, Chris. Not you, Chris. They were thrown out of the building and they looked from outside in but they had no way of even seeing because there were no windows, and the windows that were there were boarded up. And he started with this. This may be the most important speech I've ever made. I think you misread one word there, Mr. President. It may be the most impotent speech you've ever made. Because it was just another rambling mass of lies that lasted a full 46 minutes. Also in Arizona, the Attorney General announced 
that mail-in ballots had been stolen from mailboxes and hidden under a rock. Hidden under a rock in Arizona in the desert. Did a fast bird going, meep, meep, do this? Meep, meep. And you tried to chase the bird, and you ran into a painting of a tunnel on the side of a mountain. By the way, if you run off a cliff, you'll be fine as long as you don't look down. Even what I'm saying now will be demeaned and disparaged, but that's OK. Well, as long as it's OK. You're a petty, angry man, desperate for validation you will never receive and have never deserved. And in 50 days, you'll be out of the White House without the protections of executive power, and no court is going to uphold you pardoning yourself. It was all very, very strange. I am called to your purpose, Lord. Reveal your purpose to the Proud Boys. Use us to lift up this city, to save the people of this city. Don't let it die. Amen. Amen! Show some motivation! If you make me look like a jack, I'm gonna come for you. What are you gonna do? I'm sure you can. I'm gonna probably beat the of you. Never me. Is that a white claw? That is a white claw. White claw! White claw! Mango white claw! A lot of people assume that I'm here to protest Antifa and BLM, and that's probably the furthest thing from the truth. It's about Western, the Western world, Western nationalists, like we love America. We believe in God and America and the Constitution, I love my country. They started out with the right intent. I, I don't think they started protesting for no reason. Yeah, I mean, watching the, the knee on George Floyd's neck, I mean, that's like, that was f***ed up. Did you support the initial Black Lives Matter protests? Um, I mean, I don't know. Actually... I want to cut this interview. We wanted to just get police and law enforcement the tools that they need to combat these riots. The Proud Boys communicate with the police. We do communicate back and forth. We just want to keep our side of the street clean. I understand sometimes when the left are like, oh, well, they're violent. It's because we make self-defense look like assault. A warrior doesn't always need to use a sword. Sometimes you need a pen. Our pen is our iPhone and our memes. I got kicked in the head and my phone got thrown away and got kicked out of the rally. And you're a 22 year old student journalist. They scream at me and they say, you're not real press. So I said, hey, I'm with the N uh, NPPA IWW. They heard industrial workers of the world and screamed socialism. And they start yelling Antifa press, Antifa press. I'm press. your press. You guys I'm are down, downtown throwing Molotov cocktails I'm and I'm, I'm the press. press. And then all of a sudden this hand comes down and throws me to the ground. They kept calling me Antifa press and I was like, I'm just a journalist. And then they're like, well, if you're not an Antifa journalist, you're still Arab. 